I joke around about burnout. Uh, I, we're going we're gonna to have fun today. But you have to know, this is all I do. And I read every article and every study. And it, burnout is a serious problem. It affects millions of people worldwide. Ariana Huffington calls it the disease of our civilization. And there's article after article on uh, lawyers on burnout. Doctors, this, this one came out less than a week ago where now the, the rate on doctors is up to 46% of all doctors are suffering from burnout, nearly half of all doctors. Teachers are a group that I talk to a lot on burnout. Mental health workers, and then you get to these people called law enforcement. Y'all are the, they say that doctors are the number one group right now suffering from burnout. But police officers, law enforcement are nearly as, I mean, every article stressing burnout, six ways to beat burnout in a police officer. What can police officers do to avoid burnout? Preventing the long and lonely ride to officer burnout. I mean, there are so many articles coming out about peace officers. And you know it because you live it. I mean, and you, you know it because I know it from being district attorney. It's, it's not as bad for district attorney, but it almost is because y'all and us see things that normal people don't see. You know it? And sometimes it stays with you. I mean, how many of you have ever done this where, like, your child is wanting to go spend the night with somebody? Okay, what's her dad like? Does he drink? You know, because you've had that case. But burnout is everywhere. Bluebell ice cream had me come talk to all their people. If people are burned out at Bluebell, we have a problem. I mean, they, you know, Bluebell ice cream. I weighed like 150 pounds when I went to talk to them. It was crazy. How many of you, show of hands, think, you know what? I think I probably know somebody that's suffering from burnout. Maybe it's a friend, a coworker, or, or a close relative or something. Show of hands, how many think you know somebody suffering from burnout? And keep the hands up just a little bit. Yeah, look at all the hands around the room. You can put them down. I mean, it, and it's like that every state in Canada. When I did it in Canada, it's like that. It's everywhere I go, it's that. For six weeks, I am the headline story, the front story of every news uh, deal, NBC, ABC, CBS, at nighttime. I'm the headline, and I'm the headline of the morning paper the next day for six weeks. This one right here, worker dead at desk for five days. <laughs> now, now you, you, you laugh, but wait until I go ahead and show you underline. In the office he shared with 23 other workers. Oh my goodness, that symptom of burnout is you feel like other people don't care what you think or do. More than likely if you're dead at your desk for five days, they don't really care. I mean, I was in a, it was a bad place. And, and I, uh, I tried everything. I read everything I could possibly read. I'm a guy from West Texas, and I still went to like a depression type counseling. I mean, I just, I just like, I don't do that, but I did. Because I'm like, I gotta, I gotta get out of this. I gotta get out of it. I got to, something's gotta happen. I guarantee you, you go around the room, you spend as much or more time at work as you do anywhere else. You know you do, and you have to be able to have fun at work. And let's face it, we've got the craziest, I mean, y'all even more than me, but I mean, when I was a DA, I mean, it's the craziest thing in the world. I mean, I prosecuted a guy for sexual assault, sent him to the penitentiary, and his last name was Feeler. I mean, you know, you just can't make that stuff up. I, it's just crazy. We used to do hot checks. We had a, we had a, I had a kid that owed me over $1,000 in hot checks. And I look out in my outer office one day, and he's just paying them off. And so I thought, well, i got to go give him a hard time. So I got there. I said, Galilee, Travis, what would you do, rob a bank? Well, I am doing this talk in San Diego, San Diego. And I'm about ready to go to the next slide. And I have a girl kind of out here raise her hand. And I'm like, hey, yeah, what's up? And she goes, uh, do you still have the cat? And I'm like, that's not me. That is not me. Are you, that's just jacked up. You know, when you have teenagers, crud, they just want to go out all the time and, and their rooms are horrible. And so you're like, okay, fine. you want to go out, you clean your room. You clean your room, you get to go out. It's really easy. It's not like, you know, it's parenting 101. Clean your room, go out. Okay, it worked. She would clean her room, I would let her go out. 
At least I thought she was cleaning her room. Because I'm walking in the back of the house and I'm smelling something. And I get to her room and it's clean. The room's clean. I get to her closet. Holy moly. I mean, from the floor to the ceiling is homework and food and drinks and dirty clothes and clean clothes. I mean, from the, and, and you're like, Mark, you know, you're exaggerating from the floor to the ceiling. Well, let me tell you what I was smelling. What I was smelling was one of Ashley's blouses burning against the ceiling light bulb. It's a wonder it didn't burn down the entire house. She was, yeah, she got in trouble. And uh, so I go to bed that night. I go to bed and I have this note on my bed. Dear Father, Dear Mr. Yarbrough, a.k.a. Father, I apologize for secretly storing my clean, dirty clothes on the bottom, raising to the ceiling of the closet. It was very unfunny and somewhat irresponsible to me to withhold you of my secretive sneakiness. From now on, I will either put up my clothes where they belong and keep my closet clean, or I will learn how to make a lock and key so I can continue my cleverness and pile my junk back into my closet so I may continue to be lazy. Either way, I hope this experience taught you a lesson, as I know it did me. I beg of you not to hold this occurrence against me, and we can forgive and forget. As you know, you're only 15 once, and your baby girl is growing like a tomato. In loving respects, your daughter, a.k.a. your pride and joy, Ashley. Congrats on the trial win. Now, you have to know, I don't have a clue what trial I won, and I could care less. But the note means more to me than anything. I guarantee you, if we were in, went around the room, every one of you are going to have at least one of your favorite photographs. You're going to have a photograph, maybe it's you and your dad fishing. Maybe it's your family at Disney World. Maybe it's a group of friends here with you together, you know, out at the pool or on the beach or something. You're going to have a picture where you can go to that picture and it's just like... <sighs> And you remember everything about that day. That day was like perfect. You know, it was a day where your kids were actually all happy at the same time. Or, or a day where, you know, your dad told you a story. And you're going to have that photo. And what I recommend you do is you take that and you put it on your, wherever you spend a lot of time. If it's in traffic, put it in your car. Put it on your computer screensaver. Put it on your phone screensaver. Put that picture wherever you can just see it without ever leaving and you can just, it'll just transport you back there. You can just escape and you can be back in that moment. 2011 study, the average worldwide income is $7,000. And only 19% of the people in the world live in a country that make that much. And I was always like, am I getting a 2%? Am I getting a 3% raise? You know, we, we stress and we worry so much about money and things. And, you know, we're on the beach looking at the ocean. We're all got down here in cars or on a plane. We all have nice clothes on. We're going to go back to warm homes. I mean, we have things really good, and we need to, I need to remember that. I mean, we really do.